the Starship Energy System. The system is made up of several components which are shown now in this circular slide. The solar panel, the run battery, the generator, the battery flipper, run battery 2, the battery bank, the battery and the AC inverter, and of course the home. So we take energy from a small solar panel array like a 65 water and we charge the run battery and this allows us actually to uh, not deplete the battery during daylight operations and the solar panel is small and its efficiency can be increased by using reflective uh, items and so the power comes out of the run battery to the Starship motor and it runs the motor and out of the system we bring energy out this is the free energy now the motor is running with a, with a gear for power takeoff so it supplies the electricity the free electricity back to the run battery 2 and to the battery home storage system and that is kept charged and the advantage of doing it this way is that there's no heat generated in the batteries they charge quicker and to a higher level thus they're going to last a lot longer out of the battery bank it's fed to the DC to AC inverter this particular device then converts the electricity to use in the home this is my grandson winding a coil and this is our very first setup it's you'll see three magnets only and this particular we do not have a starship coil mounted just showing uh, the low friction of the bearings this is the power supply that we're using and uh, we're now going to install one starship coil as you see here in this particular instance the controller was very very simple now we move to the lab where we're using the same power supply but we've done a lot of fine-tuning and you'll notice it starts instantly uh, unlike the the Bedini system so here we're using a, a simplified uh, exciter and now we have nine coils installed but we're only activating one and we have nine magnets and actually you're seeing it run without the top on because it becomes kind of like a gyroscope this is a test where we ran the motor for four hours and fed back the free energy to the run battery and so I've sped this up so you can kind of see uh, uh, how long it ran with how much energy was depleted from the battery uh, I don't think it's possible to ever eliminate the battery at all but remember we're going to have a solar panel charging that so you can use this system to extend a run battery operation and this is the RPM meter we have installed and this level is about as low as we should go with uh, discharging any type of battery you will need to match your solar panel to your run battery uh, this is kind of important here is my uh, new Hantec scope 5200A and we're seeing the green is the input, input pulse and the red is the back EMF and this is the famous H pulse and so we put in one pulse and what do we get we get one back EMF pulse um, need to do something better than that so this was our early design where we get many pulses out for a single pulse in and uh, I made a very simple analog comparator computer so it would get the timing just right and as you'll see here this was backing up going forward backing up again uh, the tones sound like a, the pong game um, or pac-man game um, it's just the at the frequency we're using it's resonating between the magnets and the coil and now it is locked on and it will bring it up to full RPM uh, in this case with one coil this is not a super Starship coil we're about at 4000 RPM divided by 9 again here's the um, uh, waveform the input pulses versus the back EMF uh, and now we're going to compare how fast we can charge a capacitor which could be the battery bank but the capacitor is used for testing and this is a single pulse uh, uh, and we're showing here that we can get for this particular run uh, we can get a um, uh, 48 pulses in now the beauty of this was a low current or low power draw 
Okay, so I've sped this up quite quite fast here. It actually takes one minute and six seconds to charge this capacitor bank. And we'll charge in one minute and six seconds. Uh, and we're going to discharge the cap. And you can see the pulse here. Now this is uh, 48 pulses. This is our second run on this. And it'll reach uh, uh, only in four seconds. Now we have made that even better with just two seconds. With a actually just two segments of one coil and it reaches now 235 volts and can go higher than that so the key is to find the right level of voltage to pulse in char uh, pulse charge your capacitor bank. Here we're showing how much power was in that uh, capacitor and uh, so again it's finding the you don't want to overdo things just find the right amount of power.